Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first ever virtual Ansarada Dealmakers Award celebration. Tonight is in recognition of the work undertaken by this industry in 2020. Please welcome our hosts for the evening, Mary Lou Gregg and Alan Committee. Good evening. It's so wonderful to see so many of you online to celebrate these awards with us tonight. And a very warm welcome from me as well. I'm beaming into this award show from beautiful Cape Town in the heart of Tokai, in the crotch of the southern suburbs. You can just catch some of the late afternoon sun on my banner behind me. But I am very honored to share the digital stage with you, Mary Lou. You look gorgeous. And uh, to all the wonderful delegates who are tuned in for this award show, a very warm welcome from me. I think we're going to have the most spectacular evening tonight. I know it's a slightly different format. It might feel a little, a little strange initially, but over the next seven or eight hours, we will be giving out <laughs> two and a half thousand awards <laughs> in the first category and then really get into our business a little later. I'm joking, of course, it's going to be much longer than that. But the good news is that you have the two of us as your co-hosts throughout the evening, and we are going to have a, just a fantastic time. In fact, I am hearing now that uh, as one of the moments of entertainment during our evening, we will be crossing to one of you, the delegates, where you will be asked to perform extracts from Lord of the Dance, uh, but in Hebrew. So that is something to look forward to, no matter where you are seated. Some of you in your lounges, some of you on your kitchen table, some of you in your bathrooms. <laughs> you, that's very brave of you. Uh, Mary Lou, I think we're going to have some fun. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about what's lying ahead for tonight? Thanks, Alan. Last year, the achievements of which we celebrate tonight was quite unlike any other track by dealmakers. Charles Darwin is quoted as saying, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It is the one most adaptable to change. This, in a nutshell, aptly embodies the experience of businesses globally during the COVID-19 pandemic. The ability to embrace the digital revolution to advantage and to adapt to the unusual ways of communicating with clients, suppliers, and stakeholders has in many instances determined the survival of many operations. And so it is the nature of the beast that mergers and acquisitions occur under many circumstances. And as such, the pause in M&A activity in the first few months of 2020 slowly abated during the course of the year. Advisory teams found themselves operating in a changed environment one that brought significant complexity to deals. Transacting parties who were halfway through acquisitions or disposals had to deal with challenging regulatory and other delays. Lockdown conditions limited the ability to conduct due diligence investigations and complications arose in terms of valuing and pricing business enterprises and assets. There was also an increase in post m and disputes where deals delivered below expectations with some potential buyers relying on material adverse change clauses to exit transactions. To this point, 11 additional deals announced during 2019, but which were yet to close in 2020, were terminated, pushing up the number of failed deals for 2019 to 30, a number topped only by the 44 failed deals in 2008. Not surprising then, that deal values last year were down almost 40% and deal activity down 20% for the year of an already low base. Having said this, the fact that sizable and complex deals and transactions were announced at all is testament to the hard work and perseverance by the teams of people who drive this industry. Tonight is about celebrating those deals that did make the light of day. These achievements would go unrecognized if it was not for our sponsors who have had the courage and the vision to continue to back these awards, even in the most difficult of circumstances. My grateful thanks go to Ansarada as headline sponsor. This is the eighth year in which they have been involved in this prestigious event. Sabanya Stillwater for those much sought after gold medals. A2X, a sponsor of the awards to the top M&A broking teams. The Mail and Guardian, as sponsor to the awards for the transactional support services category, and to Exaro, Brunswick and INS as the sponsors of those highly contested awards, the BEE Deal of the Year, 
the deal of the year and the individual deal maker of the year. On that note, let's hear from our headline sponsor, Ansarada. Hi, I'm Lela Rantwane, the founding CEO of Atta Capital. I'm Kiet van Sale, co-founder of Knife Capital. My name is Aaron Burgess, and I work at Rand Merchant Bank. Graham Stoker, Head of Private Equity for EY Cross Africa. Johan Holtzhausen, I'm the CEO of PSG Capital. Hi, um, I'm Kerry Hutting um, from Travel Start. Hi, I'm Sam Riley, CEO of Ansarada. You might remember me from last year where I made a big point of telling everyone about the great work you guys do helping people in times of stress and uncertainty and when everything's on the line and the value you bring to people to help them realise their potential. And also how that all adds up, all of that work in this room adds up to helping the great nation of South Africa realise its potential. Big congratulations to you guys for getting through the year. You know, that's not to say it hasn't been hard, but hard times can often bring forth uh, great innovation. That's how we're looking at things here. We're, we're innovating with product and service and pricing that is really designed to help you raise your potential. And in these times, most importantly, protect potential. Potential for business and advisors and investors. So we've got a lot more great things to bring to you for deals, governance, compliance, boards, things that have helped people move faster, make better decisions, manage risk, achieve more efficiency. So I wanna welcome up Ari, who's gonna to talk to you a little bit about what's on offer and once again, thanks for trusting us this year. We hope to serve you even better than ever and enjoy the night. Hello dealmakers. For the eighth year running, it gives us at Ansarada more pleasure than ever to celebrate your incredible achievements over this last year, which will go down in history as one of the most challenging of all time. The tenacity, resolve and perseverance displayed by each and every one of you to not only help prevent the economy from completely breaking, but also help secure the future of South Africans deserves huge congratulations. Thank you very much for your continued support. It is an honor and a privilege to serve such an astute community, which we will continue to do to the utmost best of our ability. The good news is Ansarada has invented the deal platform again. We are launching deals by Ansarada. Deals bring together a purposeful set of solutions into one fully integrated platform that delivers value across the complete deals life cycle. Reduce risk and gain efficiencies. Now you can centralize all your deal activity in one place to optimize your and your client's potential. Watch this space for more. Cheers, well done. Give yourselves a pat on the back from Ansarada. Our thanks to Ansarada, brilliant. Now, we would really like this evening to trend on social media. So we're gonna be asking you to keep posting throughout the evening. Uh, you can see over there on the screen, all the various handles you can play on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, on uh, LinkedIn, and uh, make sure that you're uh, keeping busy uh, online so that we make a little impact out there in the digital space. I've also got some great news for you. Something fantastic is happening this evening. And it's not just me in this gorgeous suit. No, our headline sponsor, Ansarada, is upping the ante. You weren't expecting that, were you? No ante was going to be upped in your minds. Well, you were wrong. They are. They're upping the ante and they are giving away the latest Fitbit. Now, health is so important, especially in these mad lockdown times. Uh, so this latest Fitbit is all the rage and they are giving one away. And all you have to do to win it is to answer three simple questions throughout the course of this evening. I will be asking those questions and each question has a one word answer. If you think you know the answer, you can type it into the chat box and send it to us. And at the end of the evening, those three one word answers need to be unscrambled in a particular order. And only if you get that order right, do you stand in line if you're first up to win this Fitbit. So that's really exciting. I need you to keep sharp Stay with us, 
listen for those questions. I don't know when I'm going to ask them. It might be now. It isn't, but it could be. It won't be, but it could be. So I don't know. So that's exciting. I'm really here to help Mary Lou, uh, to help give out these awards. And as I said earlier, that is a tremendous delight for me. But it has been a mad time, hasn't it? We are now coming to the end of February of 2021, the second year of our pandemic. It's kind of crazy. Uh, we, remember when we hit 2020, we had come out of quite a bad year, 2019. And we all said to ourselves, wherever we were in this beautiful country, we said, well, 2020 will be much better. We even laughed, didn't we, collectively. We said 2020 sounds like perfect vision. <laughs> That's how we laughed. And then those first two days of 2020 were magnificent. I don't think there have been better two opening days for any year. The sun shone, the clouds were away. It was wonderful. And then on the third day of 2020, fires broke out in Australia. And we thought to ourselves, whoa, that's a little bit of a blip, but it's going to go away. And then on the fifth day, Donald Trump declared war on Iran. People forget this. He didn't follow through because he couldn't find Iran. So we can be grateful for his lack of geography. And then in the second week, the royal family were up in arms because Prince Andrew was caught out in all kinds of shenanigans, wasn't he? And they were distraught because they thought this would be revealed in season seven of The Crown. So they covered that up very, very quickly. And then in the third week of January, need I remind you, load shedding reared its head once more in our country. And we jumped from stage two to stage six, back to two, then six, four, two, six, six, four, two, six, six on the O double one code. And that's what you had to phone to find out what the what is the schedule for ESCOM for the next day. And then we got to the end of January and we all kind of let go. We just sighed a collective sigh and we said, well, at least the worst is behind us. <laughs> and then, it was then that the pandemic hit us in full force. And then before you knew it, it was February, then March, then April, then Theresa May and clicks. No one predicted that drama. That came out of nowhere, wasn't it? Here today, gone tomorrow. And then in June, uh, Catlejo was cut from the outsurance adverts. And now in those adverts, we just have people talking to no one in the cars. It makes no sense, but somehow the adverts are better. And then June became July before we knew it, it was winter. Then Donald Trump was questioning the very heart of democracy in America uh, through their election period. This is a man, Donald Trump, whose language is not his first language. I, I don't think he could find earth on a globe. And then uh, <laughs> before we knew it, 12 months had passed. There we were, we were suddenly in December. And I don't know, Mary Lou, if you celebrate Christmas, but for those who do, I think there's something that's changed fundamentally, and I want to talk about this very briefly. It's the nature of the Christmas cracker, because back in the day, and I'm much older than you, Mary Lou, but back in the day, the Christmas cracker had structural integrity. It took five family members on either side to break the Christmas cracker. Am I right? I'm not wrong. And you gave it a good tug and the Christmas cracker. I'm just gazing, you know, gauging the level of comedy here. And you gave it a good tug, and then the gift that came out of the Christmas cracker was enormous. It was a BMX bicycle or a Blaupunkt black and white television set <laughs> or even another family. It was tremendous. In 2021, the Christmas cracker is pathetic. You don't even get to pull it. You just look at it and it disintegrates in front of your eyes. And the gift inside takes until the 14th of January to work out what it is. And what it is is a spinning top with no spinning capability whatsoever. It might as well play for the Proteus cricket side. So that doesn't help anybody. And now here we are, uh, middle of May, and we now, oh, sorry, middle of Feb. <laughs> We're not in May. We will be by the end of this awards evening. <laughs> but it's now <laughs> the middle of February. And I'm happy to report that the vaccines are here. Although if they're not completely here, they will be here, or they'll be arriving soon or later than that. But if not earlier, then definitely take one jab or take a second. And if they don't help, then take something else. But don't get upset unless you must. Then do get angry because it didn't arrive when you wanted it, but you could have got it from when you shouldn't have. I don't know how to end that sentence. But what I will say before we move on is we're missing out a trick here in South Africa. Forget the vaccines. We always make a plan in South Africa. And remember when we were growing up, Mercurochrome, that was the thing that cured everything. Uh, you'd run outside as a seven-year-old boy and you'd rip your arm from your ligament and it would it would just be hanging by a single thread and then your mother would dab mercurochrome, just two blobs of mercurochrome, send you back out into the yard 
and all was good in the world. Why don't we just inject people with mercurochrome? Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure. I help wherever I can. Now, I know you've been waiting patiently in your little homes. Is it time for the first question? <laughs> yes, it is. So here it is. Are you ready, folks? Uh, the first question of the evening is, we all need this on our phones to access the internet. And I'm looking for that one word. We all need this thing on our phones to access the internet. If you know what that is, please type it into the chat box. I said, stay sharp. The second two questions will come later during the course of the evening. So before we kick off the awards, I'm handing back to my gorgeous co-host to give us an overview. Mary Lou. Thanks, Alan. The general corporate finance league tables track all activity by exchange listed companies other than the pure M&A deals. The nature of these transactions during 2020 reflected a country in lockdown with companies active in capital raising to shore up balance sheets. Companies look to their advisors to manage and leverage entrenched relationships with institutions to provide much needed capital. Those corporates in the fortunate position of having extra cash took advantage of the drop in share prices to repurchase own shares at significantly discounted levels. Restructurings and unbundling of assets aim to add value to shareholders. While only those com companies confident on market support such as 91 and Bytes Technology, proceeded with local and secondary inward listings. Right, it is time to hand out some awards. And our first category is General Corporate Finance, Transactional Support Services by Transaction Flow. Now we have in third place a tie. And let's see who those are. It's KPMG and EY. Congratulations to both. In second place, we have PWC. And our winners in this category are BDO. Well done. Now we are looking at transactional support services by transaction value. In third place, we have EY. In second place, KPMG. And your winners are PWC. Congratulations. Next category is general corporate finance. Legal advisors by transaction flow. In third place, we have Bowman's. In second place, Cliff Decker Hoffmeyer. And your winners in this category are ENS Africa. Legal advisors by transaction value. Your third place winners are Bowman's. In second place, we have Cliff Decker Hoffmeyer, but the award goes to ENS Africa. Congratulations. And now our awards are going to the general corporate finance category, sponsors by transaction flow. There are no third or second place handed out here because we have a tie in first place. And that is going to Investec Bank, PSG Capital and Java Capital. Well done. And now the sponsors by transaction value. In third place, we have Investec Bank. In second place, Rand Merchant Bank and the award tonight goes to JP Morgan. In general corporate finance, we are handing out awards, investment advisors by transaction flow. 
In third place, we have Nedbank CIB. There is no second place. We have a tie in first, and in first place, they are Investec Bank and PSG Capital. Congratulations. Investment advisors by transaction value. In third place, we have JP Morgan. Coming up in second position, it is Investec Bank. And the award goes to Rand Merchant Bank. Congratulations to all the general corporate finance winners. Absolutely brilliant. Congratulations to all those first set of winners. There will be more handed out before you know it. Um, I turned 47, Mary Lou, during the course of lockdown. I know that's a huge shock and a surprise to you. Uh, you don't feel old when you're in your 40s. Now, I imagine you're in your 30s. You won't have this feeling yet. But in time, it will come to you. And uh, in your 40s, what happens is you feel like you're still in your 20s. I speak for everyone watching this this evening who are in their 40s. I feel like I'm in my 20s, but when I look at my friends who are in their 40s, I see their deterioration and I see it a lot, but I don't see it in myself. I've actually got a friend I visited recently, he's 42, and he spent last week incapacitated, on his back, could barely move. I said to him, how did this happen? Were you zip lining? Were you, were you uh, kind of water skiing? Were you playing cricket? He said, no, he hurt himself because he was wringing out a towel with too much enthusiasm. And he pulled something in his back and then he tried to apply deep heat on himself and dislocated his shoulder. You, you're very vulnerable in your 40s. That is what I will share with you on this Tuesday night. And you've got to look after your health. During lockdown, I put on a little bit of weight. I don't think I'm alone in the country uh, in that experience. I knew I'd put on a bit of weight because I would go out for a Sunday lunch and only come back on a Thursday. And, and that in itself is problematic. Um, I got to a point where I was so big, people would give me a kiss on both cheeks, and that would involve a little walk. That's, that's not good, actually. I went to my doctor, I said to him, I, did, I said to my doc, I'm, I'm exercising, but my eating habits are a problem, doctor. Do you have any advice? He said, don't eat anything fatty. I said, what, like pork chops and bacon? He said, no, you're not listening to me. I said, don't eat anything fatty. And so, um, yeah, that's what he said to me. The bar. Anyway, he's not my doctor anymore. I've gone back to gym. I'm trying to eat better as well. A gym is interesting. The new thing they do there uh, is called interval training, where you run as fast as you can uh, for a minute, and then you rest for six months. And I can't tell you how brilliant that is. I'm going back in three and a half months to see the results. I'm very excited. But I guess it's also about combining that with your eating habits. And the fad diet in this country for a long time was banting. I don't know if that's still happening. Uh, in Cape Town, that still exists among people. I'm banting, I'm banting. And they talk like that because the carbs have got stuck in their throat. Um, I tried banting. I lost four kilograms just listing all the foods I'm not allowed to eat. This is propagated by the Greek professor, Tim Nuakes. No, no not Nuakes. <laughs> Noakes. Tim Noakes. That's his name. A bright man. I don't know if you know him. Um, Mary Lou, a wonderful man. Not, not particularly healthy looking. An intelligent man, no doubt but not healthy looking. He's too thin, too thin. His nipples touch. For me, that's too thin. Um, but here's the truth. I tried something and I wanted to share this before we move on. And I think it's important that we do share. We be vulnerable with each other during the course of this uh, deal makers evening. And I tried something recently which worked a treat for me. It's called the mirror diet. Maybe you've heard of it. I, I suspect you haven't. What you have to do is get completely naked and eat your meals naked while watching yourself in a mirror. I can hear you laughing in your homes. Oh, Alan, how ridiculous. Just give me a chance. Let me share some of my stuff as well. You have to get completely naked, eat your meal uh, while watching yourself naked in a mirror. It was brilliant. I lost five kilograms in a couple of weeks. And then some of the smarter restaurants said, no, this is upsetting the other patrons. And so now I had to give up. And that's what the problem, isn't it? Lockdown is just filled with restrictions wherever you go. Would you like another question? I think you would. I've got one, you're lucky. So here is uh, your second question. Uh, COVID-19 has caused events to move from being live to what? I'm looking for that word. 
COVID-19 has caused events from being live to dot, dot, dot. If you know what that word is, type it in. And that's your second question. Mary Lou. Thanks, Alan. Difficult to be, remain serious with your comedy. Congratulations to the winners of the General Corporate Finance Awards. Dealmakers is 21 this year. And for those of you who have yet to physically attend our annual awards, we have put together a short clip to give you some insight into what has become known as the Oscars of the M&A industry. Let's take a look. The Dealmakers Awards have been celebrated since 2000, acknowledging the significance of the South African mergers and acquisitions industry and the efforts of these dealmakers in driving our economy forward in the toughest of environments to close billion rand deals annually. The awards highlight the importance of the collective spirit and camaraderie despite the competitive nature of the industry, one that commends teamwork, partnerships and collaborations. Historically, we celebrated together at a glittering gala event. In light of the COVID pandemic, it is simply not possible this year. Whilst we aren't physically together, never stop reaching out, keep the network alive. This evening is about you, the deal makers of this wonderful country of ours. So sit back and relax and enjoy the evening as we celebrate your achievements. We now move on to the Black Economic Empowerment Award. And this is for um, first place only. Legal advisors by Deal Flow. In first place, Cliff Decker Hofmeyer. Legal advisors by Deal Value in first place were Cliff Decker Hofmeyer. Moving on to investment advisor by Legal uh, by Deal Flow in first place, Nedbank CIB. And investment advisors by Deal Value in first place, NetBank CIB. Congratulations to all our incredible winners. We now move on to mergers and acquisitions. Because we are virtual, our valuable sponsors will join us tonight via pre recorded videos. And instead, the winners from each category will join us live via Zoom. First up, we welcome Hussein Karjika, CEO of Mail and Guardian. Through journalism, the Mail and Guardian strives to promote freedom, justice, and equality, with the aim of creating space for debate and diversity, to defending freedom of expression, and to combat racial, political, and religious prejudice. News stories are critical in their unearthing and questions are the catalyst of change. The role of journalism should not be forgotten in establishing our democracy. An independent press is an asset of this democracy and must be protected. The Dealmakers Awards speaks to those very people who are in a position to make this happen. Good evening, everyone. So who would have predicted this, eh? A year ago, I stood in front of all of you dressed in a tuxedo and was subjected to Nick Rabinowitz taking aim at me and my invisible socks. Despite all of that, life felt really good. 
Many of us expected that 2020 was going to be that year. And then in March, all hell broke loose. Within days, the most carefully laid out plans had to be reconsidered. We were forced to rethink everything we do. I will stop wearing suits, as you can see. Nick would be proud. A year later, we sit here celebrating these awards, and we do so with some level of distractedness. The virus is close, and its impact even closer. It was what has become even more stark for us in media is that disinformation has been used to weaponize mass movements and spread propaganda, which represents a significant threat to South Africa's as well as the continent's media landscape. Trust is under siege. We are comforted that at the Mail and Guardian, we employ a large cohort of sub-editors who, together with robust review processes, diligently ensure that our articles are fact-checked and accurate, and we take great pride in being recognized as the most trusted weekly news brand by Reuters. All of these costs make our business uh, model slightly more tricky and complex, and we recently embarked on a Project 10,000 campaign to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Many of you responded to the appeal I made last year, and I encourage all of you to do so again. I also wish to take the opportunity to express our gratitude to all the media law experts who have helped us over the years, especially Dario Milo and the team at Web Wenzel. Also, congratulations to all the award winners this evening for the good work that is being recognized here tonight. Thank you very much. Thanks there to Hussein. I was thrown a little bit that he mentioned Nick Rabinovitz. He shouldn't have done that because obviously under the Comedians Comfortability Act of 1997, you can't mention another comedian in the presence of another comedian, but I'm, I'm, gonna let, I'm prepared to let that pass. And I'll tell you how I'm gonna do it by announcing our next set of uh, category winners. And first we're looking at mergers and acquisitions, transactional support services by deal flow. Right, in fourth place, we have EY. In third place, it is PWC. Coming up in second, we have Deloitte. And the winner by flow is BDO. Thanks, Billy Lou. Congratulations, Nick. And I'd like to say a special thank you to my team for an incredible effort in a very challenging and trying period. Keep safe, everyone, and thanks again. Congratulations. Right, we're moving on now to mergers and acquisitions, transactional support services by deal value. And our fourth position winners are BDO. In third place, KPMG. In second, PWC. And the winner by deal value, Deloitte. Congratulations, Aubrey. Thank you very much. Oh, that's it. Thank you. Aubrey never has a thank you speech been that lucid and succinct and brilliant. Thank you very much. In front of lace curtains, do we need to say more? We certainly don't. Let's move on. Mergers and acquisitions, legal advisors by deal flow. In fourth place, we have Bowman's. In third place, Weber Wenzel. In second place, ENS Africa. And in first place, you've guessed it, Cliff Decker Hoffmeyer. Thanks, Mary Lou. 
Um, thanks for once again hosting hosting the awards, um, even though it's a virtual event. And I also just want to thank my my team for all the hard work in this past year under very difficult circumstances. Thank you very much, William, and uh, a congratulations to you as well. Right, we're now looking at legal advisors by deal value. In fourth place, Bowman's. In third place, Cliff Decker Hoffmeyer. In second place, Weber Wenzel. And in first place, by deal value, ENS Africa. Not now, can't talk now. Um, ENS is most excited about this award. Um, we highly value Steelmaker's ranking. Thanks to all of my colleagues and thanks too to Mary Lou and Steelmakers for their invaluable service to the profession and for hosting tonight's virtual event. A huge congratulations to you there, Michael. And what an impressive array of books behind you. Are they yours? We will never know. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would firstly like to thank Mary Lou and the Dealmakers team for once again inviting A2X to participate as a sponsor in this evening's awards gala. Secondly, I would like to commend Dealmakers for pivoting the event from its traditional sit-down banquet to a virtual gala in response to the surging infection rate seen in early January. In many ways, your actions reflect the very reasons we are here tonight to acknowledge and celebrate the teams and individuals that have managed to adeptly navigate this uncertain environment and make the business happen. Who would have thought that just 12 months ago, when we celebrated the skills of the winners in what was then seen as a tough economic environment, that the world was about to face a new, and at least in our lifetime, an unprecedented crisis. However, the crisis has also brought out some of the best qualities in humanity. Industries came together, competitors put aside their differences, and many people dug deep into their pockets and their hearts to give time and raise funds to help battle the fallout. At A2X, we are honored to be part of such an industry. Like many here tonight, A2X also had to adapt to the changing environment. And I'm pleased to say, Thanks to an incredible team, we remained open for business and continued to operate seamlessly throughout the period. We also managed to att attract eight new corporate listings during 2020, including the likes of Sassel, Process, Exara, and Momentum Metropolitan, bringing the total number of securities listed on our platform to 40, with a combined market value of 5.5 trillion. Importantly, through our lower exchange fees and narrow bid offer spreads, A2X was also able to make savings available to the market of some 330 million in 2020. As a stock exchange committed to development and integrity of South Africa's capital markets, A2X is proud to be sponsoring this year's awards, the top sponsor by deal value and by deal flow. I would like to wish all the nominees the best of luck tonight. And in looking to the future, I would like to finish off with a quote from author E.B. White. Hang on to your hat, hang on to your hope, and wind the clock, for tomorrow is another day. 
A to X is proud to be sponsoring this year's award for top sponsor by value and by deal flow. It's time now to look at mergers and acquisitions and sponsors by deal flow. In fourth position, we have Rand Merchant Bank. Coming up in third, it is PSG Capital. Our second place winners are Investec Bank. And in first place, it's Java Capital. On behalf of Java Capital, I'd like to say thank you. A huge thanks to you, Simone. I like the way you were just there in the corner. You didn't want to take up all that space. You just gave us uh, a very nice balance. No, you can laugh as much as you want, Mary Lou. That is exactly what happened there. And I'm very grateful to Simone. Because some people just take up all of the picture and it's ridiculous. But she knew, give us space. We need space. It's a pandemic. We need social distancing. And she gave it to us. Right, let's move on. All right, we're waiting now to see if we can go to sponsors by deal value. We don't have that yet. We're just waiting there quietly. In and in fourth place is Investic Bank. In third place, Java Capital. In second place, we have Questco. And in first place, it's Merrill Lynch. Thanks very much and well done to the team. <laughs> oh, thanks to you there, Latricia, fantastic. Right, we move on. We're looking now at mergers and acquisitions. Right, uh, we're looking now at investment advisors by deal flow. Uh, in fourth place, we have a Thai Rand Merchant Bank and Rothschild and Co. In third place, PSG Capital. In second place, we have Java Capital. We're not giving out the first place award yet. We will do that in a, a, a little later in the evening. So let's turn our attention now to investment advisors by deal value. In fourth place, we have Standard Bank. In third place, Investec Bank. In second position, it's Java Capital. Congratulations. Sibanya Stillwater is a leading international precious metals mining company that is driven by a passion to showcase excellence in the South African deal-making environment and continues to liberate exceptional value. The Ansarada Deal-Making Awards provides a premier platform to highlight some of the world-class deals concluded over the past year and is proud to sponsor the One Ounce Gold Medals. As a past recipient of the Ansarada Dealmaker of the Year Award, Sabanya Stillwater is delighted to sponsor this edition of the annual Ansarada Awards. With our corporate commitment to smart, value-accreted transactions that support our strategic growth aspirations, we appreciate Ansarada as a premier platform to showcase the innovation in the corporate transactions concluded by South African companies and recognize superior corporate finance advisors. We continue to admire the quality of the transactions being profiled that liberate substantial value and continue to rank at the highest standards of deal making on the world stage. 
I would like to congratulate all the nominees for setting ever higher standards of excellence. In 2020, especially in the challenging circumstances brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. Our sympathies are with the judges who had the difficult task of selecting a winner from among all the worthy contenders. We are pleased to be associated with Ansarada in providing this important forum for recognizing commercial acumen in South Africa. Thank you. Gold medal winner of Deal Makers of the Year by Deal Flow is Investec Bank. And unfortunately, Eldad is having a bit of trouble getting um, online. Um, and this is probably because he's won this award, well, Investec has so many times before. But congratulations to Investec on this, on this award. Well done. Congratulations, Eldad. Sorry we couldn't see you. Great name, though. Love it. We now move on to the gold medal winner of Dealmakers of the Year by Deal Value. And that goes to Merrill Lynch. Uh, thanks very much, Mary Lou. Um, this award is testament to a fantastic team effort uh, and what a number of people have said is a has been an incredibly challenging year. Um, so well done to the team. Um, really, really proud of you. So cheers. Cheers to getting back to Dealmakers next year. Brilliant. Thank you very much for joining us, Justin. You look great. You, you've got a George Clooney look about you. May I be so bold as to say that? You look like George Clooney's younger lesbian brother. And we are thrilled for your success and congratulations. I've been very lucky over the years. I did a show called Defending the Caveman for over 970 performances. And uh, during that time, I, I would have the opportunity to observe some of the differences between uh, men and women. And in fact, that show was written this year, 30 years ago, back in 1991. I wondered if some of those truths still held water. I'm happy to report that they do still resonate, but there are many new learnings that we've developed. But there's still one thing that hasn't changed over all that time period. And that is something that I'm, I'm almost ashamed to share with you this evening, but I will. I will push on and say it. And that is that I often, and I speak for myself, but perhaps on behalf of some of the other men who are tuned in tonight, I don't always bring the kind of detail to stories that my partner is looking for. And I'll give you an example of this. Recently, I went to Pick and Pay. And at Pick and Pay, I saw a friend of my girlfriend's. And I saw that and I acknowledged that. And I was quite excited coming home to share that story with her. And I told her, I said to you, to my girlfriend, I said, I saw a friend of yours at Pick and Pay. And that was my story. I thought a very good story with a strong beginning, a powerful ending and quite a lot of detail in the middle. And then my girlfriend said, oh, was it Helen? And, and, and I, I said, huh, who, what? She said, was it Helen? I said, who? She said, the woman you saw at Pick and Pay. I said, I, I don't know, I didn't speak to her. I mean, I didn't say that in my story. I just, I saw her, I've seen you with her and I've assumed friendship. So that's my assumption. But then I was excited. I came home here to tell you here what I saw there, which was her, a friend of yours at Pick and Pay. That's all I have. That's my story. She, she said, Helen, with her husband, Greg. I said, there was no man in my story. I don't know why you're bringing a man up. I was at Pick and Pay shopping as you instructed me to do. And I was doing that quite well. And then I saw her and then I came here to tell you here, what I saw today, that's it. That's all I, I don't know who Greg is. She said, Helen, with the blonde hair. I said, blondish? Yeah, bl blondish, reddish, bald, br br brune. I don't know. I don't have. I'm sorry I went to pick and pay in the first place. Honestly, I really do regret it. And I, I'm sad that I even brought up the story. I want to withdraw all of this, all subsequent information, and just go to bed. Sadly, we are no longer together. I'm now with Helen, actually. <laughs> Greg wasn't there, so <laughs> take your opportunities where you can, don't you? And in fact, this is something I want to share with you. This happened to me recently. I went shopping on my own, and I went to go and buy some bed linen. I don't know when last any of you have gone shopping for bed linen. It's not the kind of item that you often shop for, is it? Often you move into a house, and there is bed linen there, and you just use that if you're a guy. 
But I decided I must go to the shop and get myself a duvet. Stuff you, that's how I say it. And um, I went to a, a shop called At Home, which is a misnomer because it's not at home, it's at a mall. So that already was irritating to me because it put me on the back foot. And I walked into the store and I was ready to go and buy the duvet. And here's the store, here's what I want to share with you. And in fact, it's almost the reason I called all of you together on this Tuesday night. Oh, a lot of you are saying, oh, is it not to hand out these awards? Yeah, maybe. But really, it's a bit of a, it's an intervention. I wanted to talk about this moment. I had a sexist thought. And in 2021, I'm deeply ashamed of it. And I wish to apologize profusely to everyone out there. But allow me to explain what that thought was and why I had it. I saw a male shop assistant. And I thought to myself, perhaps I could talk to him and have the kind of conversation I'm dreaming of having, which is essentially, hello, sir, could I buy a duvet? And he'd say, sure, here's a du duvet. And then I take the duvet, pay for it, go home, make a bed and go to sleep. That was my dream. That is what I had in my heart. So I went to the male shop assistant. I said, how's it? I'd like to buy a duvet. And he said, I assume you know what TOG value you're looking for. Now, I don't know if any of you know what a TOG value is. And there's no shame if you have got into your 40s or 50s and you don't know what a TOG value is. It is, in fact, a European scale of measurement. And it measures, if you didn't know, it measures the level of heat retention of the materials within the duvet. In other words, is it a hot or cold duvet? That's what he could have asked me, but he didn't. He said, I assume you know the TOG value. I didn't. I thought TOG was the bag he was going to put the duvet in, but I know nothing. I said to him, please, I don't know what, to, what TOG do I have? He said, well, you can have four, seven, nine and a half, 12. 15. I said, nine and a half. So in this made up system, there's even a fraction. I was starting to get quite irritated. I said, please just give me a duvet. He said, when would you use the duvet? I, I said, when the moon is in the seventh house, and Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace, I started to lose my rag. And I didn't want a rag, I just wanted a duvet. I said, please give me a duvet. He said, down. So I threw myself to the ground because when you hear that instruction in a South African <laughs> shopping mall, you don't take that instruction lightly. He said, what, the, what are you doing? I said, you said down. He said, no, down duvet. I said, down. I was so embarrassed. I said, of course, down duvet. And he said, duck. So I threw myself back to the ground. He said, I, what's going on? Are you having a stroke? I said, no, you said duck. He said, no, you can get duck feathers or down feathers. There's a choice. I said duck. And he didn't. So I punched him. Sorry, sometimes you just get irritated, don't you? And you have to sort people out. Right. It's time for question number three. And I have it written here for you, folks. Here is your final question. This is in order to win your Fitbit. The question is, our homes, offices, and schools are made up of different spaces called, what is that missing word? Our homes, offices, and schools are made up of different spaces called, type in that one word, and now you should have three words as part of all your answers, unscramble them in an order that you think is right, and the first person to get that right will win the Fitbit. We will announce that just a little bit later. And now, the final set of awards. Mary Lou. Thank you, Alan. The next set of awards is the so-called Subjective Awards. I would like to thank Bernard Swanepoel, Ponke Ig Hodaro, and Puti Mahaniele de Bengwa, who give freely of their time and who make up the Dealmakers Independent Panel. They undertook, they undertook the unenviable task of sifting through the nominations and selecting the worthy gold medal winners. With the increase over the past few years, most notably in 2020, of companies in financial distress, a decision was taken by dealmakers to introduce, for the first time, an award for Business Rescue Transaction of the Year. The aim is to highlight the option and the associated benefits that the business rescue process can afford to companies and stakeholders alike. Right, it's time to look at the Business Rescue Transaction of the Year 2020. Here are your nominees. They are Comair, Pumalela Gaming and Leisure, and Edcon. And the winner of the Business Rescue Award goes
goes to RS Advisors for Pumamlela Gaming and Leisure. Thanks, Mary Lou. It was very pleasing to see a business rescue category in this year's award. And thanks to dealmakers for recognizing the uh, M&A work that business rescue practitioners do. Uh, just a special thank you to everyone who assisted me in delivering the Pumalela Rescue. Uh, and uh, I look forward to next year's uh, awards and seeing business rescue as a permanent fixture. Thank you. Congratulations on winning the successful business rescue transaction of the year. And now the Capitalist Private Equity Deal of the Year 2020. And in no particular order, here are your nominees. The Actus Acquisition of Octotel and RSA Web. The Metier Capital back the Retailability Acquisition of Edgar's. And the Capital Works Acquisition of Peregrine. And the winner of the Catalyst Private Equity Deal of the Year for 2020 is the Capital Works Acquisition of Peregrine. Thanks very much, Mary Lou and Dealmakers. This award is an important reference point in the industry and Capital Works feels honored to have been recognized. Thanks very much to my team for a, an effort that went above and beyond. And thanks also to the host of advisors that assisted us in the transaction. Well done to Capital Works for the Private Equity Deal of the Year. In everything we do, we strive to power better lives in Africa and beyond. Exaro is more than just a mining business. With a mission to invest in the sustainable growth of businesses with black ownership, including youth and women, Exaro offers long-term sustainable benefits. Exaro embraces and prioritizes socio-economic development by investing in their enterprise and supply development program as well as local procurement policies and practices that ensure SMME development in and around the mining communities. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening as this may be a global event. And uh, thank you very much for having me and uh, Exaro at the Ansarada 2020 Dealmakers Award. Uh, it's an absolute privilege for us to once again, for the second time, have been invited to be a sponsor to the BE Deal of the Year. It's an important category for Exaro, and uh, as I said last year, we ourselves as a company were born out of uh, Black economic empowerment in South Africa. And since then, for the past 10 to 12 years, we've remained focused on continuing to be successful, not merely as a Black economic empowerment company, but as an economic player in, in the South African economy and in South African society. Why do we sponsor this transaction? Well, we see ourselves as an agent of transformation, not only from the boardroom, but in terms of the whole economy, if you look at the sector where we play, in energy and in mining. And it's a transformation that we'll continue to participate in. Black economic empowerment itself has played an important role in really getting the country to where it is today, in terms of a much larger participation of our population in the economy. It remains an imperative for every company to continue to play a role because it's the right thing to do. But I think also because of the difference that it can make to the country and to the people that we impact. I'd like to say a heartfelt congratulations to the nominees to this category and hope that it's not the end, but rather the continuation of a journey. We will be looking not only at ownership, but across the whole broad spectrum of black economic empowerment and beyond that in terms of making South Africa a better country. I wish you an excellent and fantastic afternoon and uh, be safe and uh, take precautions against this COVID-19. And let's remember as well, the scourge against uh, our women and children and let's stand up for uh, violence against women and children. Thank you.
And now, the Exaro BEE Deal of the Year 2020. In no particular order, here are your nominees. The Momentum Metropolitan's establishment of the Isabello Trust. The Anheuser-Busch InBev's unwind of SAB Zenzela. And Chiara Health's acquisition of Novartis's manufacturing operations. And the winner of this year's BE Deal of the Year is Chiara Health on the acquisition of Novartis Manufacturing Operations. I'd like to thank um, Ansarada Nekas on behalf of Evu and Chiara Health and all the 200 associates that we have on our facility. We thank you for supporting what is quintessentially a BE Deal. Thank you. Bye bye. Congratulations to Kiara Health for the BEE Deal of the Year. M&A activity has an important role to play in economic development, enabling businesses to reap synergistic benefits and leverage new markets, innovations, and economies of scale. Often these benefits are not well understood. It is for this reason that Brunswick has, since 1985, partnered with their clients, as well as their financial and legal advisors in South Africa, across the African continent, and the major capital markets around the world. Brunswick sponsors the Deal of the Year Award to show our support to our clients and to other advisors who work so hard on critical deals, often against challenging circumstances. Brunswick looks forward to continuing to work with the DealMakers team to acknowledge and celebrate those who are participating in the transactions that are all important to the economic development. Good evening, everyone. It is a well-known fact that M&A activity has a role to play in economic development. Whether this means the growth of business, encouraging innovation, or the potential benefits of economies of scale. Often, these benefits are not necessarily well understood. And it is for this reason that Brunswick has, since 1985, partnered with our clients to engage on the issues that matter most and help them navigate the interconnected financial, political, and social arenas. Brunswick sponsors the Deal of the Year Award to show our support to those deals that have made a contribution in one way or another. For this year's award, we commend all the nominees for being able to get these deals across the line during a year that, as we all know, was challenging due to the pandemic. Congratulations. The Brunswick Deal of the Year 2020. In no particular order, here are your nominees. Sassel's disposal of a 50% stake in Lake Charles Chemical Project. The Fashini Group's acquisition of JET. Tongart Hewlett's disposal of its starch division to Barlow World. And the demerger of Bytes Technology by Allied Electronics. And the winner of the Brunswick Deal of the Year 2020 goes to Altron's Demerger of Bytes Technology. Thank you so much, uh, Dealmaker. Uh, I also would like to thank uh, my colleagues, both in South Africa and in the UK, for executing on this deal perfectly. Uh, we had also great advisors in the name of uh, RMB. Uh, the LA Palpa, and also in, in, the, in, the, in the UK, we had Numis. 
So I want to thank all of these because without them, we would not have been able to execute this uh, really complex deal that unlocked great value to our shareholders. Thank you so much. This is an outstanding achievement. Congratulations, Altron. INCE has been a sponsor of the Dealmaker of the Year Award for many years because it talks to their purpose, which is to connect investors in Africa to each other and the rest of the world for a more inclusive society. Leaders make the difference in society, as has recently been witnessed in the change of presidency in the USA. Corporate deals have a major impact on many stakeholders and the communities in which they operate. The Dealmaker of the Year is a leader and INS is privileged and proud to play a role in showcasing the impact this leader has on society and inclusivity. INS is proud to be a partner of the Dealmakers event and we have many, many years of wonderful memories. Um, and this year I'm sad that we're obviously not in person. However, I know I'll be getting to bed a hell of a lot earlier. Most importantly, I'd just like to congratulate all the nominees and the winners of this prestigious event. And we are super proud to be a sponsor of the Dealmaker of the Year Award. And I would just like to wish all the nominees of this award the best of luck. Lastly, I would just like to thank all our customers for their ongoing, continued and loyal support. It means the world. Have a great evening. Cheers. It's time to award the INS Individual Dealmaker of the Year for 2020. In no particular order, although I'm hearing it's according to their horoscope star signs, here are your nominees. They are Quibus Himan from One Capital, Lydia Shadrach Rosino from ENS Africa, and Anthony Knox from Merrill Lynch. And the winner of this year's INS Individual Dealmaker of the Year goes to Anthony Knox. Thank you, Mary Lou, and thank you to your team and all the sponsors. Uh, it's a real honor to get this and to be recognized uh, by yourselves. Um, also, a special thanks to all our clients who make this possible. And, um, and of course, the team at B of A. Um, it was a hell of a year last year, very busy, and also doing it all virtually, uh, work from home environment, which made it uh, even tougher. But uh, thank you especially to them. Thanks very much. Congratulations to Anthony Knox as the Individual Dealmaker of the Year. Absolutely brilliant. A huge virtual and digital scream, shout, ululation for everyone. Congratulations to all the winners. Uh, and uh, well done, Mary Lou. We got through it. We've we given did. out two and, a, two and a half thousand awards. It's incredible. We do <laughs> still have one prize to give out. And uh, you're all asking who won this wonderful uh, Fitbit uh, from Ansarada. Well, I'm happy to tell you it was a very close call. We had at one point Lorna Salga, who uh, got the final answer. She was the first person to type in the final answer, and we assumed she'd be the winner, but no. She was <laughs> pipped at the post from the Latin Papeo, Papere, Papui, Papitum. I do speak Latin. I'm completely bi bilingual. And she was pipped at the post uh, from a lady called Soria Hay. Uh, who is from Bravura, or Bravura, or Bravura, or Bravura, and Bravura to her, because she has won our uh, Ansarada Fitbit, and Soria for you, Lorna, but Soria is our winner. Well done. Congratulations to you, Les. Brilliant. Brilliant news. And of course, the correct uh, word order was, for those who didn't get it, was virtual data rooms, which is the Ansarada slogan if you hadn't worked that out, but I suspect many of you had. You were just slow in typing it in. More speed to you in the future. Uh, that Fitbit, by the way, uh, Soria, will be delivered to you uh, in the next 48 hours. So congratulations again. Just a reminder to all of you out there that the Dealmakers 2020 annual magazine will be available as a hard copy upon request and on the website www.dealmakersdigital.coza. 
Thank you for allowing me to be part of this. I've had so much fun. Whatever you do in the coming days, please look after yourselves. We're not completely through all the madness. It does feel like it's getting a little better, but continue to sanitize. I was sanitizing between applause tonight. Each clap I would sanitize. That's how fastidious I am. And that's not a word I was expecting to use when I started that sentence. So keep sanitizing, keep your social distance and wear a mask. Some of you make masks look very sexy. Others of you are going to have to keep wearing a mask even when the virus is gone. Not just one mask, a second mask, maybe even a third. Needs must. Thanks for listening to me. Back to you, Mary Lou. Thanks, Alan. It has been fun. And as we close this evening of celebration, I would like to extend my appreciation to you, the M&A industry, this evening's sponsors, and to the Oval Table for the continued support during these challenging times. It is because of you all that Dealmakers is here tonight. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we look forward to welcoming you back next year to the Ansarada Dealmakers Annual Awards.